What's up, my fellow Chibits? Today, I'm here to bring you, as per usual, the weekly manga chapter review of Bleach, chapter 636. So, Zoraki loses his arm. His arm twists around, and Zoraki just rips it off. It just crushes it on the ground. Props to being straight up like a beast and a badass, just to even rip off your own damn arm, like... Let's be honest here, I don't think the majority of us would be able to rip off our own damn arms if we saw something like that. We'd probably be too freaked out if we saw our arms just twisting around and stuff. I don't think the majority of us could probably do what he did, especially with probably the amount of pain you're feeling. So, 10 points to Zoraki for even be being able to accomplish something like that in this week's chapter. So, from the way the chapter was structured, there there's one thing I really gotta point out that's very obvious, and I think the majority of us probably already had it cross our mind when we were reading this chapter. Obviously, Zoraki lost his arm, okay. But in terms of it permanently being gone, I highly doubt that. Because Orihime, for one, arm, heel, we've seen it done before. I mean, let's think about it. And then also, Mayuri, we know he's a crazy wacko scientist that we've seen him one time before regrow his damn arm. So I highly doubt that Zoraki's arm is gone for good. Unless he gets some form of badass robotic arm, that which would be fucking badass. But. I, I don't think Zoraki's arm is permanently gone. I really doubt that so much because we've seen too many instances in Bleach with arms and different things like that where I highly doubt the arm is just, you know, completely gone for altogether. So now that I've got that point across, Zoraki seemed to be mainly used as a way of demonstrating the abilities of this Quincy. That, that's kind of what I feel like Zoraki was for. And it kind of upsets me a little bit because Zoraki in a sense, don't don't take this wrongly, was kind of used as if he was like fodder just to demonstrate the abilities of the Quincy for Mayuri can go in and then curb stomp this dude with his crazy, you know, scientific ideas and shit like that he normally does. And I mean, I like Mayuri, don't get me wrong, I love his character, I love it when he starts going in, I mean, he's a badass, I, I'm a big fan of his character, I'm a big fan of Zoraki too, and I love their combo, the way they acted together, it adds a really good dynamic to the chapter and then, you know, Bleach in general. But I'm not a big fan of how Zoraki, you know, lost his hand, and then, you know, or his arm, not just his hand. And then also, it's just there to demonstrate the abilities and kind of just kick to the side in this chapter. So, it's a little bit upsetting, but besides that, I'm still looking forward to seeing what this Quincy really is. Like, finding out more about what it looks like and stuff, because it just looks like a weird, bizarre, mutated fucking head thing. I, I don't even know where to begin to describe that disgusting look at Abomination. So, we come to find out that this Quincy's abilities could supposedly manipulate the Reishi inside of a Shinigami's body. For instance, Zoraki had his nerves infiltrated and this Quincy decided to just twist his hand around, spin it off, and then just break it off. That's kind of what happened to Zoraki in the chapter. So, if this dude invades your body, you're kind of fucked. And so, the only way that Mayuri could save Zoraki, he stabbed him straight through, gave him like an... Uh, anesthetic to where he passed out and he couldn't do anything and in the exact same time he also messed with this Quincy and made it to where he's already under some form of drugs so we already know the game is set match already I mean when Mayuri already inserts his drugs inside of you you're already fucked like seriously when Mayuri the doctor comes in and he gives you those shots you're fucked <laughs> it's, it's done the doctor's in and he's about to kill you ass so that that's that's kind of what that meant in this chapter so that dude is pretty much already said and done but I'm still curious to see exactly where Koobs is going to take this fight because usually when Mayuri steps onto the plate, he has some very twisted and sadistic type of killings going on. I mean, the way he does his uh, stuff, it's very sadistic. And I I've always loved that because just the way he acts is so fucking funny because he's so scientific how he breaks things down and then, you know, explains and acts like he is the best thing of all time. It's just it's always fun getting to see that. So yeah, Bleach this week. Uh, it was, it was average, it was an average chapter, nothing too special, nothing too bad, we're still on the fence about who this Quincy is, which is kind of upsetting, but it's to be expected because this is Koobs and you know, you know how he is when it comes to writing chapters, but besides that, eh, I liked it. Tell me your thoughts, how do you feel about what happened to Zoraki, do you feel like his arm is permanently gone, how do you feel about what Mayuri did with stabbing Zoraki in the back and also in indirectly hurting that Quincy, just let me know your thoughts in the comments below, you all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live, please be safe, chibi out.